Hello everyone and welcome to Golden Nova's First Reacts, where I react first to all the things you want to see reacted to first as long as I'm the first person you come to to react to things first. And it's lore time, lore time, Supreme Darkness bringing us some more lore. We're talking about more Zamina and Sinful Spoils cards. Oh, they look positively tragic. I'm sad, but I also can't wait. Uh, this image is a big standout, actually. It looks to be some kind of, like, montage of Dia Bellstar going from leaving the forest after it was taken over to the modern day. Uh, the top left, it looks like she's, like, homeless trying to study some books. Bottom right, she's, like, running away from what I assume is goblin bikers. All the while, she's trying to, you know, fend for herself. Uh, the, she still has like a little monocle thing still because she just likes wearing monocles and the little glass jars that she's got in here one looks like a wing one of them looks like a like, well, more like a feather the other one has a kind of spike to it uh, the feathers are like a wing thing or maybe that's fur actually maybe that's the fur uh, the top one and the bottom one's like a bat like claw thing so maybe that's like the sinful spoils parts before they get integrated we're, we're getting to see a lot in this one, I'm sure of it. So let's not delay any longer. It's time to look at what the cards actually do. Azamina Elzet of the White Forest. Oh, no, they got her! Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I posited that this is exactly what was happening going on here. Diabelle Star left the forest, whereas Elzet slash Diabelle's uh, was captured by the creature taking over the forest. Oh, no... So it's an Azamina and a White Forest card. A level 2 Light Illusion Monster, so now it's an Illusion. I'm pretty sure the original was a Spellcaster. I think so. They were all Light uh, Spellcaster monsters. Uh, you can only use the first, second, and third effect of this card once per turn. Uh, it has zero attack and defense. Uh, level 2 Light Monster, not a tuner, but the level 4s were tuners, not the level 2, so this makes sense. You can reveal this card in your hand to special summon a White Forest or Zomina monster from your hand. Oh, so it doesn't have to just be itself. It can be, because it is both a White Forest and a Zomina, but it can special summon a different thing. Okay, so that's pretty good for turboing out your plays. During your main phase, you can fusion summon an Zomina fusion monster using materials from your hand and or field. Okay, that's kind of nutty, right? Because beforehand you had to use the Azamina card effects that sent Sinful Spoils cards to make those work. Now we have an actual on-theme way to Fusion Summon instead of just having to run non-specific Fusion effects for this. So that's pretty nifty. If this card is sent to the graveyard as Synchro Material, you can add a Sinful Spoils card from your deck to your hand. Oh, that's, uh, that's scary because there are 8 billion good Sinful Spoils cards out there. Cool, good. Um, this card is already wild. Sinful Spoils of the White Woods. Quick play spell card. You can only use the uh, each of the first and second effects of this card once per turn. Each. If you control a Fiend Illusion or Spellcaster monster, activate one of the following effects. Special summon a Fiend Illusion or Spellcaster monster from your hand, or Fusion Summon a Fusion monster using materials from your hand and or field. If this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a monster effect, you can set this card, and it is a quick play spell, so you can't immediately use it, but it is a quick effect, and... Oh! Okay, so obviously, insofar as Azamina's, this is a nice card to have, right? It, it's another fusion card that you can use. You have to control this particular tri-type. I wonder if we'll be establishing this as a tri-type moving forward. Um... But not only does this help you fusion some for the Azamanas, uh, or get them out of your hand, uh, <laughs> we're, we're looking at Chimera Fusion. It's, it's just Chimera Fusion again. Uh, this can fusion summon any fusion monster. It doesn't just have to be uh, any of these listed monsters types, so that's pretty cool. And because it's a quick play spell card that does not restrict its activation timing, we have a way to summon Guardian Chimera outside of main phases, because... Uh, boy, howdy, if you don't have a Fiend monster on board in your Illusion Chimera deck, or heck, even just an Illusion monster, uh, something, something's going wrong. Something's not, not something's not working out too well. Uh, this is another cracked... Oh my god. Okay, what's going on in the card art here? What can we... We can see the Disciples. 
at the bottom here, and I've got the green and the purple. Uh, once again, green and purple has been a motif up till this point since we learned about, well, not ever since we learned about Diabelles. We knew that Diabelles had the green eye, and then we saw that LZ had the purple eye, and then we saw with White Woods that Diabelles, Fiend, Fiendus of the White Woods, had both colors. And this image appears to show Diabelles as a protective figure. Uh, I, uh, so they're looking over, and, and we saw in the previous picture with LZ, the one that, would, like, level two just now that was being, uh, controlled, that creature there, at the very least, did not look like Diabelles. It could be a corrupted version of Diabelles still, I'm not ruling that out, uh, but this very clearly shows, like, it's giving both of them, like, protection and some of her power. So I think it's safe to say that at least the synchro version that we saw originally is not the villain, but maybe it's like, maybe it got corrupted and turned into Moa Regina. That's currently what I'm thinking here. Okay, Pray the Diabelle. Huh? Quick play spell card. If a spell or trap card is, oh, well, first, you can only use each of the first and second effect of this card once per turn. If a spell or trap card is sent to the graveyard to activate an effect, send an illusion or spellcaster monster from your hand, deck, or extra deck to the graveyard. So, the White Woods come to mind, but we can still use, uh, we can still trigger this with things like, uh, well, Dia Bellstar. We can send illusion or spellcasters from hand, deck, or extra. So I think there's, I forget exactly what the Azamina monster effects are, but I'm sure that there are some that work well while being in the graveyard. So being able to just send those is pretty nifty. During your main phase, you can banish three spell or trap cards from your graveyard, including this card, to special summon a Diabelle monster from your hand or graveyard. Doesn't pull from the deck, but it does get both Diabelle star and Diabelles. Uh, and I guess Diabelle, what is that? I, I think the fusion, I think the synchro is called Diabelle, and then we have Diabelle Star and Diabelles. Um, let me know if I've got that wrong off the top of my head. Um, so, so what? We have a reactive quick play spell card that's a foolish of particular monster types that sends from the extra deck, which is pretty rare. But we want to be sending it to the graveyard with our cards because it has a great graveyard effect for bringing back Diabelle monsters. Uh, all three of which are pretty swanky. Uh, now, what's going on in this card? There's a lot... There's a lot here. Um, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. The big creature from uh, Azamina Elzet's card art is in here. Presumably that means that that's Elzet in the, in the back. Uh, this here, though, I don't... Have we seen this person before they've got like this big head headpiece um oh you know what she's got some feathers and she has the claw this might be a different white woods witch that lz is going after this is morion this is white witch morion which is going to be turned into a sinful spoil and then that's going to be grafted onto her and that's where Elzette's going to get the big claw hand and all the feather stuff. That's where this is coming from. This, actually, no. This is Moa Regina. Because if you look at the headpiece, it's that, got that same like alabaster white um, kind of bird jaw thing going on. Okay, so these are two separate. Okay, so maybe this skeletal creature is a corrupt Diabelle. This is Moa. This is Regina. That's what, that's what we're seeing here. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, buddy. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we're, we're learning, we're learning stuff. He then like the Diabelle? I, I, I have to wonder what this translation is. Uh, what are they trying to convey with pray the Diabelle and like the Diabelle? Like, I'm, I'm confused about what that's attempting to say here. Uh, quick play spell card. If a spell or trap card is sent to the graveyard to activate an effect, much like the previous card, set a spell or trap card from your hand or graveyard, but it cannot be activated this turn. So even if you um, set a normal spell card, you can recur it, but you can't activate it. But that's not too terrible because, you know, it just lets you reset a card that you can, like, set back to your field and send it again. 
Uh, if it has an effect that like resets it, that's pretty good to get it back in rotation. Uh, I'd, I'd almost say that's the reason why that exists, not to actually recur the cards. Um, during your main phase, you can banish three spell or trap cards from your graveyard, including this card, despite also many Diabell monster from your hand or graveyard, like the other graveyard effect of Pray the Diabell. So, hmm. Okay. So we have a recursion card that can, like, reset the card that we send if we want to, or set another one. Um, and then we get to bring up more Diabells. So, okay. Uh, not, not quite as splashy as some of the previous ones, but I'm, um, uh, I'm not gonna say no. Um, okay, so this is like the card that was featured at the top of the article. Can we glean anything from this bottom left? Down here? It's pretty hard because this is Dia Bellstar. She's got a big satchel that she's got the Sinful Spoils uh, for uh, Ursiella and... Oh, I'm gonna be so... I hate that I'm missing the name. But you know the two, the two mentors. These have to be those that are in these bottles. She's got, like, some kind of... It looks like a part of the White Woods. She's got her dagger in the other hand, a big satchel. This looks like a big, like, wolf beast down at the bottom left. But is that implying that she, like, found a wolf and implanted the... one of the things inside of that to create the Sinful Spoils? I'm not entirely sure, especially since the image quality is very, very uh, poor in this one. Also, what's this yellow and blue flame going on here? What what kind of experiment's going on up here? I'm I'm very confused and also very invested. I want I, I need to know more. I need to know more. Uh, okay, and then the last thing is awakening sinful spoils. Uh, normal trap card. You can only use one of the first and second effects of this card once per turn. If you control a level 5 or higher illusion monster and your opponent controls 3 or more monsters, target up to 3 cards your opponent controls and return them to the hand. If you control a level 5 or higher illusion monster and this card is in your graveyard, you can set it but banish it when it leaves the field. That is almost exactly like a upgraded version of Morion. Uh, Morion, I think, sets cards though, right? Yeah, yeah, Morion, if you control a level 5 or higher illusion, you can set a monster. And then if you control a level 5 or higher illusion, you can reset it but banish it when it leaves the field. This one bounces cards if you meet the same monster requirement and your opponent has three or more monsters. But you can hit cards with this, so you can hit back row. That's pretty funny. Um, God, this is... I mean, I don't know if it's way better than Sinful Spoils Morion, but it's pretty good. Um, but what's more interesting here is... What's... Uh, who is this? Is this... Is this Diabelle's? That can't be it, right? I think... Because this looks like it's a uh, present day. Like the battle that we just had. Because uh, in the last set we had the Azamina monster show up to the prison that broke Diabelle's out so they could have a big fight. The, the scenery seems pretty similar to that kind of blasted wasteland situation. But I don't want to necessarily say that it's the same, especially because I can't identify literally anything else about this. Um, I need a side-by-side -side really quickly. Do any of these clothes match up with Elzettes? Like, is this Elzette? If so, then what's Diabelle's, if, if not some kind... I mean, it's an illusion, so maybe that's the whole... Yeah, no, this... I think this is... I think this is LZ, actually. Because, like, there's the the Sinful Spoil Fruit kind of at, like, the top left of the head. Um, there's the... I don't see the chain. No, the, there's the chains. No, there's the chains. This is LZ. Wow, okay. So what's, what's the implication here? So does this mean that LZ... Is this card trying to say that LZ was inside one of the Azamanas that were just defeated, and she's been set free, and she's been, st been stuck as this age all this time, and the Diabells we've been seeing this whole time, as per the name, is an illusion, a projection? Is that why these things have been illusions this whole time? Is because they're not actually, like, like they, they're, they're projections of other things being used? Oh, that's, oh, that's fascinating. Oh, that's such a cool idea if that's the case. Oh, man. 
And then and then we have this big thing in the background. I could I could definitely see this as like a corrupted Diabelle's of uh, but it could also just be like the force in the forest that was like like this is the source of all the evil. It's not necessarily a corrupted version, but I'm sure in time we will get some explanation on that one. Oh, that's so and that's why this one's an illusion now, because it's been taken in by the Zamina, and now this is like the projected version of it. Oh, wow. Uh, the, alternate, the alternate idea, though, is that this is not taking place around the time that Diabelles is being broken out of prison uh, from like the last set. This might just be a different setting. Uh, it feels totally like it should be around that area, but it's not enough to like say for certain. This could also be another flashback, like the rest of the cards that we've seen. So, I feel like it's my former theory, but I have to identify that it's not... It's not airtight. Um, oh, wow, this is so cool. So, so in this set, we get to see... What became of LZ or Diabelles after they uh, after the issues with the White Forest? Uh, issues, putting it very lightly, of course. So we see her being captured. We see what I feel like is confirmation that Diabelles is uh, is not the bad guy, is not the bad gal. So that's pretty good. We see the capturing of uh, Morion to turn into Moa Regina. That's pretty good. We see uh, what happened between the past and the present, how Diabelles got to the situation. And we have a, a card with many implications about what might be happening. You know, is, is this a recently freed uh, LZ? Is this an LZ coming to terms with the fact that her powers are being used to destroy villages? There's that big windmill in the background. Ow, ow, ow. Ooh, there's, oh, there's so, mm. Mm, there's so much good stuff, and I hope I hope this is not the last of it because these are Azamina and Whitewoods cards and Diabelle cards technically. I think this finally, I think this finalizes the Diabelle archetype, uh, which I'm pretty happy for. Uh, and now we have cards that reference Diabelle, so maybe in domain format you can just, you know, <laughs> use that, for, uh, <laughs> add Diabelle star and Diabelles into the same deck now. Because there's an archetype name for it. But previously you couldn't do that. Fun fact for our domain heads out there. Because Diabellstar the Black Witch is a dark spellcaster. If she was your deck master you couldn't run Diabells, the first Sin Keeper. Because she was a light illusion monster. Which did not line up at all. Now, may maybe, maybe we can get that fixed. Um... So for now, I'm going to ask all of you down in the comments, um, Is are you excited for these new cards? Is there anything here that I uh, was able to teach you? I'd love to know if, uh, you know, I, I, you know, my ego, I love hearing if my insights help people figure stuff out. Uh, and I also like hearing if I missed anything, so I can add that to my growing knowledge base of what's going on here. Uh, percolate your ideas for that. I'm going I'm to do a little bonus check, because I just saw... While I was waiting for these to reveal that Jet Shark was in here, this is a little extension to all the shark cards we just got out of Rage of the Abyss. I kept wanting to say Reinforcement of the Army, but I tamped it down just for you. Uh, Jet Shark, level 4 Waterfish Monster. You can only use one of the second and third effects of this card once per turn, so these are mutually exclusive. Uh, the first effect, though, if you control a Water Exceeds Monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon Jet Shark for the rest of the turn. Uh, that's a pretty generous restriction. <laughs> During your main phase, you can send a Shark Monster or Exceeds Speller Trap card from your deck to the graveyard. I believe there was some Exceeds Speller Trap card that was released in the last set that worked from the graveyard. Um, and filling your, filling your graveyard with monsters is always really good. Uh, and lastly, you can banish this card from your graveyard to add an Aqua Jet from your deck or graveyard to your hand. What was Aqua Jet again? What was... What was this card doing? Just this one. Target a, oh, it's the old one. Not this new one that presumably has good usage. No, it's this old one that gives a permanent thousand attack bonus to a Fry type. That's not the worst, but... I've seen better. Oh, that's, a, that's the wrong one. Okay, so in general, you're going to summon this one for free and then send one of these cards to the graveyard and then just... Oh, Aqua Jet card from your deck you're great never mind you can grab both of them they are both valid targets thank god um 
Well, this is another pretty nifty extender. It doesn't seem to lock you out of much. It doesn't seem to conflict with anything. More level 4 monsters. I guess the only problem is that you need to control a Water Exceeds monster first, so it's a bit difficult to utilize if you're uh, choked for uh, extra deck plays, but uh, other than that, it seems like a really solid card. Anyway, the important part, though, White Forest cards... Azamina cards, new story implications. I'm I'm losing it. I can't wait to cover these. Let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, Konami drops some juicy spoilers. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and get five percent off your order by using the coupon code Golden Nova at checkout. It was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commanders, Upstairs Media, and The Wizard Moose, Nebula Navigators, Third Dynasty, 50 Gigabits, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zajdel, Oexa Towahime, Anansi Dragon, Ancient Wizard, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Comrade Coppermottom, Eric, Frankie, Garland Chaos, Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Happy Majin, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Carp, Mana Charge, Marion James E. Picotta, Mega Comb B is entering the Chrysalis, Millennia Asta, Mern, Muse Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Pat Poos, Rebel King Lucifer, Red Eyes Jackalow, RJ the Jank Monarch, Serenity Towns, The Critic of Innocence and Thievery Coast, Cosmic Crusaders Beren Von Titi Sprinkles, Beelzefer Fish, Beluga Masta, Blitzwolf, Chaz Ghost, Dr. Reaper R.I.P., Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, Ignis Heat the True Draco Slayer, In Blink, Kale the Dragon, Kivon Public, Lobomaru 02, Manga Pages, Matt Simmons, McSpoofy, Michael Shimabukuro, Mike, Nitromo, Nyx, Obsidian, Shizuka Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Stephen Williamson, Taylor Seymour, The Legendary Raven, The Phantom Knights of Shitted Pants, The Gene, The Pokemon 52, Tiger X2476, Weasel King of Weaseltown, and Zaldureka, as well as all the lovely Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits, and other awesome perks, it would mean the world to me if you would check out the link to my Patreon in the description, or consider joining as a YouTube member.